Hey, security peeps, we are live with another edition of Breaking into Cybersecurity. It is CISO Thursdays. I am Renee Small, cybersecurity super recruiter, helping awesome leaders hire great talent. And I have two phenomenal people here with me today and a little one in the background. So if you hear any piano playing or any of that stuff going on, you know what's happening. Uh, first and foremost, my amazing co-host, Chris Colon. Hey, everyone. Thank you and welcome to another episode of CISO Thursdays. Today, we have the amazing Professor Roger White on with us. <laughs> and I, I've met him and chatted with him on several... Um, He's always so, in so, our chats. Yeah, yeah. Always, he's always in our chats, but I, I'm trying to remember the, the, the other app, um, the audio one. Darn, I'm getting yeah. old. Um, <laughs> so getting old. You know, Chris. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, um, Professor Roger White has been spreading information security and helping to educate individuals. And um, we, we've we've chatted and I wanted to bring him on for so long and that the time has finally come. So, um, yes. Professor Roger. Hello. Hello. How's everybody doing? Yeah. I'm always, um, on here, uh, when, when Renee used to do it by herself, <laughs> you know, and, um, you know, I commend you, Renee. I remember when you had three followers, that's it. It three people on it. Now, you know, your show has grown. You have, you have uh, your superstar Chris on, you know, so yeah, man, I really, yeah, I really like this show. It's very informative. You have some good guests on, including me. No, but yeah, man, it's a, it's a, I like this. Me, I am um, a little bit about me. I am, I started IT in 2000. I was an accountant, uh, and I always talk about that, that it was not my personality at all. That was not, I only did that because my parents was pressuring me to uh, go to college. So I said, hey, I like money. Let me take business, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it sounded cool. So, but I didn't like it at all. Uh, I met up with an IT person told me to um hey you know go to go to this tech school which was foreign to me i like a tech school yeah you could just go to this tech school all right so i went to the tech school i got my a plus network plus then i got hired at nasdaq because i had financial background um you know the stock exchange in new york as a help desk as a, on the floor on the trading floor um, believe it or not, there's like hundreds of computers on the trading floor, hundreds. You don't see them all, right? Each monitor has a computer behind it and there's like hundreds of monitors you see. So it's, it's very complex, very high paced. Um, and from there, I loved it. Uh, I was making a uh, uh, price order. I was making uh, 52 and at NASDAQ, my first day, I was making 53. I was like, what? Okay, I'm in. I love IT from here, <laughs> you know. And now today I work at Microsoft as a, a cybersecurity solution architect. Um, and yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm also a professor. I, uh, I teach cybersecurity. And, and also one of my greatest accomplishments is that I'm the, the board chairman of an organization called BCA, Black Cybersecurity Professional. And our mission is to increase the diversity numbers. So, you know, I uh, try to remove all the obstacles that, you know, Renee, our community faces so we can get into cybersecurity, right? I think cybersecurity is a great opportunity for us. Yeah, absolutely. No, I'm, I'm, um, go ahead, Chris. I was gonna say, I, I remember it now, it was Clubhouse. We've been on yes, several so Clubhouse yes. chats all, all around. And yes, yeah, yes. some of them were for, for uh, BCA. Some of them were with um, some other InfoSec groups. Mm -hmm. And I, I I just recall the, the passion that you had for uh, spreading it. And 
it, it, it's just so infectious. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, you know, right. People with energy in IT, which I love in cyber. And Scott Jasser says, applause for Renee all around. around. Oh, oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could not do any of this without Chris. Like, I couldn't at all. Yeah, yeah. He's literally the one that keeps it going. He's like, Renee, we need guests. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> like, he beats me up. He tells me off. He's awesome. <laughs> so, um, Professor Roger, what do you think are some of the, um, what do you think are some of like the major barriers? I'm, I'm, I mean, it's, I, I really like to hear that you, you come from so many different, you have so many various perspectives, which is awesome. Similar to Chris, you're in the field, you're, you're right. a professor, and then being on the board of, um, it, not black, it's not Blacks in Cyber, right? It's Black Cyber There's Security a couple of Association. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, what are you seeing as like the major challenges, especially when it comes to folks breaking into the industry um, from both sides? from the leader perspective and the company perspective, and then from like the student early career or transitioning person perspective? Oh, the first is, I, I don't think there's, okay. So I think what happened in our field, and you know, it's not, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but marketing got involved, right? Now it's a product. To enter cybersecurity is a product. Breaking into cybersecurity is now a product being sold at universities, at boot camps, or whatever, right? So um, to sell a product, obviously, I I have to give you a warped sense of reality, right? I can't, right? Everything has to be rosy. Everything has to be beautiful, right? This is the same way you buy a house or whatever, piece of furniture, whatever. So this product. I think now students are coming in with not a clear reality so they can level set and make real expectations. So they're, they're told that they'll get a six figure job in a, in a three month boot camp. They will learn everything they need to know to be a Chris, basically, right, Chris? We make six figures. So that means they will have to be us. <laughs> and hard, and hard in six us. months, though. Right. And six months. Well, not even six months because, you know, uh, about five months and then another month of getting ready for the cert. So really five months of in studying. Right. You will be you will be a Chris. So, OK, believing that now I'm going to go apply for a job at Chris's level. Right. And of course, I'm going to get rejected and I'll never get a job and I'll get discouraged. And then I'll never enter this, I'll never enter this field. Or I I you know waste a year or two looking for jobs and then I wind up taking a help desk job or I wind up, you know, doing stuff I shouldn't be doing, you know, that has nothing to do with this career. So, so you know, so it's important for us, you know, me, Chris, you also, Renee you know, and others like us to level set and set the expectations and give them a realistic, holistic picture of how to enter this field, right? It's not three months, you're not gonna make six figures, you know, you, 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 you don't take an exam and then the, the pearly gates open for you, you know, you uh, for because you took a cert, right? So, you know, that I think is the major challenge I see all the time with my students. I see it in my organization with my members. You know, when, when people come to my sessions, I see that all the time. They have this, you know, rosy glass, I guess. What we call that? Beer glass? Beer, <laughs> beer glass. <laughs> rosy colored <laughs> glasses for yeah. sure. Yeah, rosy colored glasses. I would hear that. Um, <laughs> And it's so surprising. I mean, Chris and I, this is going to be year. Chris, are we coming up on a fourth year of this? Like our fourth birthday is going to be fourth or fifth, fourth, right? Yeah, fourth with going into five years. Yeah. That's awesome, Renee. Gonna... You've been doing this for four years? Yeah. With Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. And um, 
what's wild is that the same it's the same story like i thought yeah. that at this point something would have changed a little bit like you know some level setting but i guess like to your point if it's marketing involved and yeah. then, you know we have to sell these boot camps and we have to sell these we we have to sell these programs we're going to dangle this six figure job in front of them and then the expectation obviously because they don't know anything cuz they're walking in like you know straight out of straight off the quote unquote off the street or brand new mm -hmm. not really understanding what's happening and walking in and, and and really taking that because someone told them, hey, if you take this twenty thousand dollar boot camp, your return on your investment is a hundred thousand exactly. dollar job, exactly. and it makes perfect sense to me as a you know from a student perspective. Do you think anything can be done from a? Because that's just it's like selling somebody a lemon, like it's just not right. Um, and you're taking advantage a lot of times of pe for, of people who don't. I mean, granted, this is the era where you can Google and research a lot of things. But if you look across a couple of different boot camps and they're all kind of selling you the same, same thing, the same thing more or less, then you'll probably think like, well, this seems legitimate. Four or five different ones are all saying more or less the same. I'll plop down or borrow this money to get into this boot camp to look for this job at the other side. And then, you know, you, they are, disheartened and frustrated and you know all those things because that 20 grand or whatever number it was i'm making that number up i don't know well how no, much you're right about 15 to 20 grand 15 huh? to 20 grand right and then mm -hmm. you know then you are out twenty thousand dollars frustrated you learn a little bit of stuff <laughs> but not enough to get you that six-figure job um, and then you're irritated because you already had a fifth, potentially like a fifty thousand dollar job, but when they come to you and want to give you fifty or sixty or seven, whatever the number is now, right. then, you, then you're still you're like, well, I just it, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so right. I can't understand from a student perspective why so many folks would be frustrated. Um, and I'm wondering if there's anything that can be done from a leadership because the students can't change that. So like from a either leadership or industry or something to stop selling these um you know over promoting these can these camps or whatever it is to folks but i guess it's a free market it is what it is but right exactly but I think, I think awareness helps a lot like what, what what are you doing renee uh what i'm doing what chris is doing outside of this right uh, because in Chris posts and stuff, he talks about this too. And and there, there, there's a lot of people that are coming out now, like, uh, you know, on LinkedIn and starting to bring that awareness. I think awareness, I think that's the only way we can really combat that. Because me, me as a hiring manager, right, I hire cybersecurity professionals. And, you know, I have, I mean, they come to me and I, I have to, you're not qualified. I don't know what to say to you. Yeah, you paid twenty thousand dollars. I mean, it's it's disheartening to me because you paid twenty thousand dollars. I want you to be qualified. You know, I don't want to say no because there, there there's a job shortage. I want to hire everybody, but you come to me uh, after these programs and whatever other things you've done, and. It's, you know, it's very disheartening to say you're not qualified. You don't know the fundamentals. You don't know what an IP address is. You know, after $20,000 of study, you know, so so that's, that's very concerning to me. That's why I speak out about it. That's why I put free workshops and all this to spread the word as much as I can. That's crazy. Sorry, go ahead, Chris. <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, for, from from to help combat the marketing and that, I think it start. It, unfortunately, it starts at the governmental level because a lot of the times government resources are being used in these um, mm. transitioning military vets, um, oh, yeah. individuals right. that are unemployed and you're getting retraining through grants and it's this grant money that is helping to fund a lot of these schools i'm not saying all of it there's people that 
spent legit money to go to these. Yes. yes. I I went to a, a training academy, but I also put in the work to really understand what everything meant. And it took me more than three months to do it. And once you invest the time, you you can get you can get the rewards from it. I think if you're looking for that fast, easy button, it's not gonna work. But from the from those that are assigning out the money to be spent on that, there should be better accountability on ensuring that the individuals are getting hired or are uh, retaining the information, maybe spot checking these organizations mm -hmm. to uh, ensure that you're, you're teaching the right types of courses. And I think if even if that was on the books, that would, and not even enforce, like that alone would scare some of these academies into straightening up. Right. Well, well, from, from a, a government perspective, right, uh, we're talking about um, workforce initiative funding, right? Um, they do. They do have spot checks and that, but their spot check is certification. If you get a certification, then obviously the boot camp did its job, right? But we know that certification, I mean, there's, first of all, there's loopholes and tricks to get certified without really having the appropriate knowledge, right? But, but even still, you get that certification. That certification alone is not job readiness. You're not ready to be a job. You have the knowledge. You have all the fundamentals. It's like a dry, I, I tell my students, the certification is a learning permit, right? Just because you pass the learning permit, I tell my daughter this all the time, <laughs> that don't mean you could drive. <laughs> you, know? you know, you have to now get, put your hands on, you need that hands-on training. You got to start and you need to start driving and you need to start driving with an expert, with a professional, right? You know, usually dad is the first, but <laughs> you know, so so that's what's missing. You know, you go to the boot camps, they give you the right information. So I'm not saying nothing wrong about the boot camp. I just don't think that it is there that model is not good for people, for truck drivers, for you know, uh, uh, waitresses, you know, that uh, people, you know, blue collar people that are transitioning over from from that industry to here. Right. right? I, I think they need a lot more hands on. You know, they're uh, some of them are barely computer literate. Right. So 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 they need a lot more help than just a certification and the certification doesn't provide it, nor did it say it will. Security Plus never said it was a hands-on cert, right? It's just to verify your knowledge, your fundamental knowledge. Right. So Sandra made a couple com comments. Sandra Johnson said, uh, thanks for mentioning this, Roger, but the problem is nobody wants to train on the job any longer. Um, and she wants people oh. to take people like us already in the field and train us. And I don't know what Sandra does. Um, yes. And then her follow-up was that, um, you know, it's so sad that some ra random people are being asked to train and have no idea what an IP address is. And that, I mean, that's yeah. what's most shocking. It's just that you can take, you pay this money, you think, because you don't know. And when, when I walked right. into security, I had no idea. And I, I, you know, the security plus, I took the one week boot camp. Right, <laughs> you know what I mean, but it was because they knew like she doesn't know this, but she knows this other stuff that was transferable, and I didn't go in there asking for a whole lot of money, extra money. I just really wanted the experience. But again, I was already in the space of recruiting security people, so I knew right. how to like the nuances. These people are completely fresh, like brand fresh. new to the industry. They don't know anything, and they're being sold into the situation, and then they're literally coming out and not knowing the. I mean, IP address like ABCs of <laughs> technology. Yeah. Like that's the exactly. bottom basic thing. So yeah. that 
really, really sad to hear. Yeah, no, and it, and it's and and it's a reality, unfortunately. But I love the I love the way you describe, um, you know, the learning permit and the certifications. That's such mm -hmm. I, I will that one I am taking. I'm stealing yeah. it from you right now <laughs> because. Okay. I think that people say that they get so excited about, you know, like, oh, I got this cert, blah, blah, blah. And I would tell them, um, you know, earlier when I was like, now the roles that I recruit are so seasoned that that kind of stuff doesn't matter. Uh -huh. was, but when I did bring in like more entry level people or interns and things like that, I would tell them, you know, um, uh, experience trumps certs every day of the week. Like you're not going to, like, it's nice to have a cert. Um, it shows that you did some learning, right? To your point, the learning permit, it does not mean that you can put your hands on that keyboard or whatever it is that that boss needs to get done, that manager needs to get done, that you can do that and execute on it. And right. so um, I love that analogy. Like it's a learner's permit. It does not mean that now we're running off, we're giving you our, our Tesla and saying, go ahead. <laughs> go, ahead. Go, ahead. <laughs> go ahead with your little one week security plus training. <laughs> go ahead. You could drive my right. Tesla, my Bentley. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. Right. Yeah. Uh, right. Some more comments in here. Um, and I believe this is, uh, who was that, Chris, that made this comment? Uh, I think Sandra, again, same with project managers. People are passing the exam and begin to think they are automatically yes. project managers and have yes. no idea what the job entails. That is so too true. Jose Martinez Ruiz says, hi. Oh, everyone, tell us where you're, where you're um, you know, I forgot. Where you're from, right? Where you're from, right? <laughs> I got so excited that, that Professor <laughs> Watcher is here that I forgot to say subscribe. Tell us where you're calling in from and watching oh, yes, yes. from, all that good stuff. Okay, so Jose says, getting hands-on training requires a company to actually hire you and give you a chance to learn on a job. But lots of companies nowadays are not doing that. They want a diamond right off the bat. So I will See? respond to that and I'll let everybody, well, okay. you know what, Professor Roger, you respond first. And then okay, back here's back. what I want to say about that, right? As a hiring manager, we're working for a company, right? Um that's not true. See, IT is a little different. Yes, to be a truck driver, I mean, uh, well, in, in some industries, they train you. Like, for example, I want to be a real estate. I have a cousin that wants to be a real estate. So you go to a real estate agency, you shadow a real estate agent for three months, you know, then then you get a deal and they monitor your deal and they they walk you all the way through through all the steps. Right. And I.T., we don't have that luxury. One and two, um, we can't teach you the fundamentals. That's what's missing. Of course, when you get hired, when you get hired at Microsoft, there's a buco load of training that you have to do. So we train you, we do all that. We train you on our systems. A lot of the systems are customized, right? We use Dockers, we use all that stuff, but it's customized, right? So we have to train you on how we use it. Uh, but we can't train you on what an IP address is. We don't have the time, unfortunately. There's, there, this is not a no experience necessary industry. Sorry. You know, it's not. And and that's another reality that needs to be told, that you have to have a certain level of training before you can enter. We have no, I mean, we call them entry level jobs because that's the entry into cybersecurity, but it's not a no, it's no skill, no experience job. Right? I think but, that's the difference. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's, um, that's powerful. You wrap that up. I mean, you said it all because it's it's true. You you said what I was gonna say. Like it's not, it's not. If you have some technology, like people, people, the some of the easier transitions are the people who've been in technology who are already doing adjacent things adjacent to security that understand some aspects, not all, and everything doesn't align equally, but some aspects of some of the roles in technology. So kind of like what Professor Roger was saying earlier is he was on, he was, you know, started his career in um, financial services, 
dealing with the technology probably in the um what kind of role was that roger it would it would have been a um not help desk but tech support like tech yeah mm-hmm. right so you understand you know the hardware component you understand there are things right. that you can take that will translate over eventually, you know, like you pivot and pivot and pivot and move over. Um, But for folks that are completely like, to your point, I was driving a school bus last week and I took this boot camp, and now, and I have zero, you know, not that I drove a school bus. Oh, and by the way, I used to build computers on the side. (laughs) I'm a gamer, (laughs) you know. Right. And then they come over, that's not really, you know, going to work. Yeah, but, but here's here's also the issue. Like you said, you took the one week book boot camp. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Let, let me get that straight. But it's not for beginners. It's for me and Chris. Me and Chris are already in the field. We we don't have enough time to spend three, four months studying something. So we'll take these accelerated boot camps to learn a technology. We already know the fundamentals. So, so, so we don't have to waste two, three months learning what a network is or learning what cloud is or learning what these things are, right? We already know. So we could take a one-week Kubernetes class or a one-week Docker's class, right? Eight, eight hour, 40 hour, full on. We could do that. We could go to a conference and and a, a DEF CON conference or a Black Hat conference and take a one week co- uh, accelerated course. Begin, uh, uh, that school bus driver can't do that, but they selling that to her. Yeah. And that's the, you know? that's the part that's really, it's so unfortunate because it's the people on it. It's like you're pounded down even more. So you sell, you being sold this thing you're taking a course thinking that you, you know, coming out with your shiny piece of paper or whatever it is, or your metal or whatever they give you. And you think that that's going to get in, that's going to be, you know, the be all end all when that's not the case. It's the, it's not typically not designed for that. And even when I was, t- when I took it, I was coming into security from HR, having recruited in security, not into a super technical role. Cause I would have told them, no, you know, not going to work. And they would have known it's not going to work, <laughs> but you know, understanding the fundamentals. And it was drinking from a fire hose. It literally was just like, what are these people talking about? I kind of think I remember some of this stuff from, you know, my IT degree from 20 years ago, but I don't remember any of it. Um, so anyway, uh, Professor Roger, please talk about your course. We have it posted and then we'll get into some more. Oh, yeah. Um, what, what, what this is, I, you know, I, as being a professor, I see what, what things are missing. So on my Discord, for free, I have uh, workshops every day that gives that hands-on fundamental foundational stuff, right? Um, I remember uh, for my organization, I was going after hiring managers, right? My peers, my my peers on LinkedIn, my peers at work. And I say, yeah, um, what is your pet peeve in hiring? And they said, they don't have the foundational knowledge. They can explain something to me, or at least they could regurgitate information, but they can't put it in a practical sense. You know, so if we test them, you know, in a technical interview, if we start testing them or putting them in scenarios, they wouldn't know how to use what they just told me about. You know? So so I said, okay, cool, I'm gonna set up workshop that just goes over hands-on fundamental stuff make sure that they understand this you know it's it's funny uh, uh boot camps and universities are not teaching windows every company is windows you're not teaching active directory <laughs> you know like so what what would a comp how how are you useful to a company that has thousands of employees in Active Directory. You know, uh, you know how useful are you if you if you if you don't know what Windows is, if you don't know how a a, a corporate infrastructure is ran. So so that's what our courses, uh, my courses do. Give you that are, real hands on. Mm-hmm. I I love that. I love the real hands on. Um, and. 
for those that like are they they get the hands on they're 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 trying it they're doing it with you um do you do you still have you seen companies take that up better or do you think yes. that okay so companies okay okay cuz yeah. one of the things that that we talk about all the time is like apprenticeships where yeah companies hire hire someone on that they they acknowledge that they don't have all of the hands-on training but you're providing that environment um in addition so you're going to start them out say at the help desk and then have graduated paths for them to move on up while getting that continuous education right and and you know that 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 was never traditional in our industry internships was never a thing. So this is a new thing. So it's going to take time to build that. It's going to take time to get the the uh, executive sign on because internships is a responsibility, financial, um, you know, HR, you know, it's it's not just so a kid comes in your, your uh, workspace and sits with you. You know, it's a whole process, there's laws, there's everything involved in that. So, so other industries do it. So I'm not saying it's not impossible, but traditionally we haven't done it. So those programs will be good to do, um, you know, in the future. That would be great to start having internships. We, we, we're we building that now. Apprenticeships would be great, right? Um, but of, of course, that to have a good apprenticeship program that has to be built. And those ties, there another thing that's missing, there's no ties between university and corporate. So let's look at the doctorate pro uh, doctor, right? My dad's a doctor. So when he went to school, immediately he goes, he goes to a hospital for residents. You don't have to go look for them, nothing. They, they immediately the school already has a relationship with hospitals already and they're already funneling and doing that so like your next class is to work in a hospital it's not okay you know you, uh, you paid all your money you got your degree good luck you know what I'm saying? hope you i think there's a hospital down the block that's hiring you know so no we need to start doing that right and i think it's on both sides i think the tech um, uh, Silicon Valley needs to reach out to universities and universities need to reach out to Silicon Valley and build that bond. But there's a problem. Elon Musk says universities are useless. And the rest of the, um, the rest of the tech, big tech follow suit. Google and all of them took having a college degree as a requirement off, right? So I don't know what the beef is between Silicon Valley and universities, but that has to be addressed and we need to build that bridge. We need to build that bronze. Students should be coming out of those university programs and boot camps or whatever into a, into a corporation. Corporations should be sponsoring them. Yes. I, I, I totally agree corporations should be sponsoring them, but I, I, I would agree with Elon and others that are removing right. uh, a, a degree as a requirement mm -hmm. because in theory, cyber and IT it is like a trade. Um, you can learn this on the job. This isn't something that has to be taught in a right. school environment like a medical um degree or something like that so mm -hmm. removing that requirement also potentially provides more access for individuals that can't afford to go to a, a four-year college but they could they could be a help desk person they could yeah. learn those things uh so i think it opens up the apparatus to it ingest more applicants more people to to grow them from the beginning yeah, yeah, and then and, and then also too, you know, our industry, we're more DIY, right? Right, Chris? How, how do you start? Yeah, okay, we went to we went to a couple of classes, but really we learned it on our own, right? 
we we set up a lab, right? When we first started, we had we bought equipment off of eBay and we set up a home lab and we learned Cisco and we learned servers, we bought Dell servers and right, we did it ourselves. So that is our industry. So the problem is, is when DIYers are more proficient than someone coming out of universities. Right. And 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 I think that's what Elon is addressing that, okay, you teach your programs, but I can hire this kid that's a bug bounty, right? That never went to school and never worked. And he has more skills than not only all your students, but he has more almost more skills than my senior engineers. Right. So so you know that that is an issue. So no, we don't. You don't need to go to university and all that, but you do need to get proper training, right? I agree with you there. You do need to get properly trained however you do it. If you're going to do it by yourself, get with a community of experts and professionals, right? Like uh, women in cybersecurity, my organization, Black Girls Hack. You know, uh, um, um, there's a lot of organizations out there where professionals are there to help you and guide you, right? Um, so, you know, those are the those are the um, things to say. Roger and uh, Chris, excellent points. I agree with both of you and understand that they do want to take the barrier down, but to your point, the skills have to be there and. Yes. Roger, you're absolutely right. Like if these other people are getting these skills, bug bounty, kids, teens, you know, folks that don't have all this flowery, these degrees, then our degrees really are useful. You know, if you, <laughs> you want to really put it out there and you put the person with the degree versus the person that's self-taught and that person that's self-taught is whacking us all around, then what is really truly the purpose? I also agree with you a thousand percent, if there's an a thousand percent out there, yeah. around um, partnerships. You know, yes. you, uh, when I was in NYU many, many moons ago, the organizations that wanted to, I didn't know anything about big four consulting firms when I walked in there as a 19 year, whatever age I was. By the time I left, I knew everything about PwC, Accenture, or EY, whatever it was at the time, right. Anderson, all those different places. Why? Because they had partnerships. They were on campus like every day. First and foremost, they were yes. to go get the pizza and the food. And then they gave out their swag and they were there constantly and they were giving presentations constantly. And all of the kids that had the accounting degrees and backgrounds knew this is the pipeline. The professors, yes, exactly. came, you know, they came, they spoke. It was a partnership and a ton of folks came out of those organizations, came out of my, you know, graduating class and marched right into the PWCs, the Andersons and all those mm -hmm. other people because of that partnership. It is mind boggling to me why more organizations aren't doing that with either to wow. your point, either the boot camps or the um, the um, universities. And I know there are some universities that are now getting these partnerships, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. um, but they do them in all these other fields. It's bizarre to me. Like I know JP Morgan Chase does stuff, all of these, like I'm and granted, those are the big, big, huge, but he, you know, Fortune 500. Um, but the smaller ones can do it on a smaller level too. They could be working with the community colleges and, you know, like areas where you can bring in the talent um, and partner. So I want, I think that's like such an easy solution, you know, not for every aspect of this, but for one layer where your degree now is worth something because right. the people who want you came to train you. Yes, yes. Like, that's the way it's supposed to work. Okay, Glenn says, hey, Glenn, it's been a while. I have been, or a while for me anyway, Glenn's probably been here. I'm the one who haven't been. Uh, Glenn says, I've been in cybersecurity for 25 years. The field has completely changed. If you don't have a specialization, most companies won't hire you. He is absolutely right. I'm hiring people daily. It is very specific. Oh, yes. the, the challenge is to find people like Chris and people like... Um, Professor Roger, point blank, period. Like, Professor Roger, I'll probably call you afterwards. Like, hey, I got <laughs> 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 oh, 
and and it and it's hard and that's you know it it's a struggle because you have all these folks trying to get in this this bottleneck because but we really we need to get people up and over that five year experience hump you know the, right. the amount of time it takes to really kind of get your legs under you as a whole um and then you know you can really really be like a seasoned somewhat seasoned professional um but he is, Glenn is right in terms of this. It's it's just hard, and it's not the you know. I, this will, to me the, the 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 industry, the companies, they are the ones that hold the have should hold the brunt of this. Like trying to fix this. This is not yes. the people on the bottom can fix. They're trying to get in. Right now, also to to Glenn's point, right, and this is a good point too. This is another myth, I think that's being sold, right? That there is this one glory job, right? There's this one job, cybersecurity professional. That's it, right? And unfortunately, when students start hitting the job market, they realize, right, when they get to urinate, they realize, oh, no, there is no one job to come in, right? When I was a kid, when I was in high school, you work at McDonald's, that one job to get into McDonald's was the dining room, right? You work at the dining room first, and then you work your way up. You'd be a fry cooker. You'd be a, you know, uh, you know. So there, there's not that way in cybersecurity. There's so many disciplines and so many different industries within cybersecurity. They all have their own nuances, right? So. There's no just one job, you walk in and then you, you know, and then I guess you just go off and do whatever you want to. No, it's not, you know, right? You have to be a specialist in something. Either it's going to be SOC, either it's going to be red team, blue team, it is going to be, you know, um, for example, um, uh, you can now specialize in I IoT, right? That's a new cloud. Right, all these uh, require security professionals. So now you can't just take that one job from a boot camp and expect you could apply for in everything. Right, so you do have to kind of narrow down what you want to do, and that's a struggle that people are 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 hitting. Right, do I want to be blue team, red team? Do I want to be a pen tester? Do I want to be a SOC analyst? You can't be a pen test. You know, I hear people tell me all the time uh, that's breaking in. Okay, I'm going to be a pen tester, and then I'm going to, and then I'm going to jump to, um, you know, a, a SOC analyst, or I'm going to be a SOC analyst, and then I'm going to jump to what I really like to do is to be a, 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 a you know, GRC. Of creating policies, right? So th th there's no jump job. There's other industries that have that, where you start in the mailroom at a law firm and you become a lawyer, right? And, and in cybersecurity, we don't have that mailroom job, right? You have to know what you want to do and what field you want to do it. Now, would you stay in that field? No, probably not. You probably transition and move around but at least you have to know where do you want to start and you have to start catering your skills to that. All right. Okay. Another comment here. Scott Jasser says, so when professor Wright white is in teaching, teaching mode, how much emphasis do you put on labs and what are some of the top tools you would recommend learning? I.e. Wireshark Nmap, Kali Linux, et cetera. Right. So yes. Um, yeah, labs are very important. Uh, I emphasize uh, and I push home lab. You really need a home lab. You're not going to get far in this industry without a home lab because a lot of the technologies you can't even do at work. You can't practice at work. We don't have a gym, right? A lot, a, a lot of companies should have a dev environment where where their employees can practice these new technologies, but that is costly, it's, it's, it's a high maintenance, and companies just don't wanna invest in that, right? That's the reality. So how do I learn Dockers and Kubernetes? I learn it in my home lab. 
right? One thing I like about this industry is that the vendors, you know, uh, um, have open source tools. Uh, open source in our community is, is huge, right? Having free tools are huge. The only difference in some of these free tools and commercial tools is the support. It's the same tool, but, you know, so you can actually download that, put it into your home lab and learn it, right? Uh, for, for example, Splunk, right? You could download Splunk and Splunk will give you fake data so you could practice how to search and all that on Splunk. And and then you will know how to at least operate Splunk. You won't be an expert, but at least you'll understand it. And then you come to an interview and we could talk Splunk, right? I would hire that person, right? And it doesn't matter that you learned it in a home lab. I asked you, well, where did you learn how to do Splunk searches and queries? Oh, I learned it in a home lab. Oh, well, okay, I don't care. You know how to do it. I don't care how you learned it. Right. And 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 I think that's something that needs that's not being promoted either. Right. That that, you know, you don't need to be at work to learn stuff. Right. What, what could we do to. Help companies with. Growing the folks that they already have or helping to bring in yes. more junior folks. Right. So here, here here's another problem. So as uh, and uh, my my day job, right, is to go into companies like LinkedIn, well, not LinkedIn, uh, to go into companies, um, the, the last company that or the company I'm presently working with is um, uh, the the government of Ontario, right? So we go in there, we help them with their security posture. We help them, you know, audit, we, we do everything, right? To help them get to a certain security level. Um, one thing is they can't, one problem they have is that they have all these techs working now. They're doing level two stuff. They're level two techs doing level two work and doing level one work because they don't have no one to take over, right? They can't get, you know, so so that that's another problem in that industry. Our techs are starting to get burnt out, right? This, this is gonna be a big issue in a couple of years if we don't address it, right? The techs that are presently working now, they can't be moved up or they move up, but they still have to do level one, level two work. Yeah. Right, that is nearly impossible. It's impossible to do their job, but now, but now they got to do level one and level two, right? So we really need so, and that's what I'm trying to emphasize here: that you are needed. There's a work shortage. Everybody here breaking in. You are needed. You are needed. It's just there's a disconnect, I think, and that's why. People are not getting hired at a at a fast rate, mm -hmm. right? There's something missing, but mm -hmm. you are definitely needed, and and company because companies need to raise up their their techs. They can't, unfortunately, you know. Yeah. With, 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 without replacement. More uh, comments. Uh, oh, go ahead, Chris. No, no, go ahead. Um, folks are like. Jason Burks, I stumbled in here on accident. The <laughs> is being given. Will there be a replay available? When is the next podcast? I'm glad you stumbled in. Today. Me too. I hope, I hope we didn't drop anything stumbling in. <laughs> <laughs> stumbled in here. Uh, Jason, clearly, this is your first time. We're here every week on that Thursdays at 1 p.m. Eastern. Chris yeah. has a pot. We do a podcast. Mostly Chris runs that show yeah. tomorrow yeah. at 1 p.m. Eastern and everything is on our YouTube channel. So subscribe to Breaking Into Cybersecurity on YouTube. And where else are we? We're on Twitter. We're on Twitch. We're all over. Mm -hmm. the yep. It's on you our LinkedIn feed. It'll be on the same. 
you can replay it on my feed. Um, since Jason, I know you're watching on LinkedIn, but sometimes it's hard to find like in the feed. So um, I'll share the link for for YouTube so that they can follow right. Yes, there. yes. Please subscribe on YouTube because it gives you a kind of like ding when we come on and all that good stuff. Okay, so a couple of comments here that I think were pretty much all together. Um, and let's see. I'm trying to remember who made the comment, but it doesn't come up on this. <clears throat> who made it? Was oh, it Sandra? I think Sandra Johnson. She was saying a couple different things here. Okay. Um, yes. So a couple comments from her. She said, um, you know, when we were talking about the different backgrounds, her background, she has three degrees in information technology, did the A plus, C, C plus, I'm assuming security plus, all that stuff. Did security in school, but never had a job. Then security job um, back then because it wasn't popular. Mm -hmm. Roger used to work as an accountant without an accounting degree, so wasn't getting the promotions. Right. Had to get through the masters in management into, of IT and got into IT project management. Awesome. We need yep. that. We need <clears throat> project management. And and that's another thing too. Another comment I want to make about the non-degree component. I agree with all of you when it's, you know, for entry, for entry in, taking away the barrier of not having a degree, right? But getting the skills. However, in most of these companies, when you're getting those promotions and going for leadership and things right. like that, they will either require it or strongly encourage it. Great. So, you know, like when it's not on there, it's just like, well, where'd you go to school? You know, like <laughs> it becomes right. because all the peers have it. Right. And, Certain industries, you know, like the PWCs and things like that, in certain in certain areas, not all of them, obviously, not every role, but in some of those positions, you have to have a degree, you have to have certain certifications, and they tell their clients, everyone, one hundred percent of our staff has X. That's it. One hundred percent of our internal audit staff has a CPA or whatever it is. Right. And that's how they're able to sell their business. That the credentials and everything are there. So. Um, it, it's it's just nuanced, and I believe that we are. Um, I think I think Sandra made a comment about um, them kind of disrespecting the degree program. It's, uh, so people are disrespecting people with degrees. They say you oh, don't need a degree. Right yep, right. and that and that's yeah, that's that, that's not good either. Okay, so um, remember this is this is breaking into cybersecurity. Right. So what we're saying is just uh, geared to breaking into cybersecurity to get into cybersecurity. You do not need a degree to move up in cybersecurity in a career to move to management in any company management, executive management. You need a degree. Right. That's the norm. So. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Renee. Sorry. I have an example of a person, amazing person, who was trying to become a CISO for the longest time and could not get the CISO role, and it was because of the degree. He was awesome at what he did, had exactly. got to a certain level, and then with the team and everything else, phenomenal person, great work, you know, great work, all that stuff. But to get to that level, I had to go get that degree. So it is yes. a requirement. That degree is polished. Right, that degree is the polish you need. So, so because there's more than just technical at at the management level, you got to learn how to be a manager, how to be a leader, right? So you need to go to school for that. There's that you know you don't wake up one day, you know, and learn how to manage people. So, so yeah, you definitely need a degree. So you know, so that that's the problem. No, you don't. And so as an engineer, no, I don't need a degree. And to be honest, the things I'm learning, schools are probably not even touching, teaching it yet. Right. Yeah. right. So like, for, for, for example, IOT, there, there's no college courses to teach an engineer IOT. Right. I mean, they're coming now, but I'm already in the field. I'm already my company's already using it. I'm working for I'm working, for example, I might be working for a medical field. I might be working for Fitbit. Right. 
I mean, there's no college degree I could take to to manage Fitbit devices. So, you know, that's just the reality right now. But to be a manager, they, they are well-known proven classes. So, you know, you, you do, there, there, there is a balance. Yes. This has been so, so, so good. I enjoyed, um, I enjoyed this time. Uh, hold on one second. Uh, Dr. Joseph J. Burke oh, Miller yeah. Jr., PMP. It's a yeah. lot of names. Dr. This is Joseph. a great point. I believe a lot of people get that misconstrued on the necessity of a degree in cybersecurity. Right. Yeah. And then Scott says, we forgot to uh, mention something to the guy who stumbled in. I think we told him to, to get on YouTube. But Scott, if we meant, if we forgot something else, please let us know. Yeah. Um, Chris, you want to wrap up? I mean, I think this was fantastic. We definitely this has been an amazing episode. Yeah, Roger, absolutely. You have, to come back. <laughs> Thank you. you have to come back. Thank you. Oh, so much information, so knowledgeable, so many different perspectives, which I so appreciate because I think sometimes when you're just in one area and you know a, a leader without the professor, without the you know, blacks and cyber group without, you know, seeing some of the pain points of yeah. the folks that are coming in, you know, people could look on the other side and turn around and say, or, you know, they could just be in a, in a, in a bubble, like, and I don't, bubble is using the wrong word, but pretty much saying like, oh, you know, what's wrong with these people? Why do they make, why do they think they can come in here and just get a hundred thousand dollar job? Like, yeah. this make it but they didn't make it up. It didn't come out of thin air, you know, like right. they've been sold into this. They put this money down. They expected to get a result. Then they didn't realize what they got, you know, what the result was supposed to be because they wouldn't, they're the student. And then, you know, they get duped and, and, and feel really, really, um, yeah. Really, really sucky. Okay, so Chris, I know you're gonna put something. That, that, this is what there. um this is what Scott was referencing. Our book, um, develop your oh, cybersecurity yeah, career at any level. Yeah, yeah, how could we forget? How how could we forget to mention this uh, oh to God. the gentleman that stumbled in? But there we go. There's there's our book. Um, find it on Amazon. Renee, myself, and Gary Hayslip. Um, I'll share the link as well. Uh, so there you go. But uh, I have one more question before you leave, uh, Professor White. If you had one piece of advice uh, for, so for someone watching us in the future, what would that be? Uh, for, for, for people breaking into cybersecurity, right? That's a cool bus driver, right? Um, join a community. Don't do it alone. Don't go alone. You're going to waste a lot of money. You're going to waste a lot of time, right? Get with a community of like-minded people, a community that people that are already working at jobs you want to be at, right? You know, those associations, those communities that will help and guide you so you don't get duped, uh, you don't waste a lot of time and effort, right? Um, um, uh, because it's, it's going to be a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, right? There is no magic pill, right? So you need to get with people that could put you on the right track and kind of minimize that time that you will waste trying to find out that, oh, this is a lot of work, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. Absolutely, well, thank you so much. And um, Renee, yes. take it on out. <laughs> yeah, no, this is this was an amazing episode. Thank you so much, Professor Roger White, for being with us. You have to come back. There yes, is of course. Absolutely have to. Um, and I need to jump into these little clubhouse rooms that y'all are in so I can hear what's going on. Um, but this has been um, amazing as usual. And like I said, I love the, the different perspectives that you bring to the table. Folks, y'all know what to do. Meet us back here, 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, on Thursdays for CISO Thursdays, meet Chris tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern for Breaking Into Cyber. Chris, who's your guest tomorrow? Tomorrow we have, let me just check the Sorry, calendar. I'm on the spot. I Chris know. always has an awesome guest <laughs> under five years, mostly yeah. under five years experience in security, um, which is where our core came from. We wanted to speak mm -hmm. to the folks that were like on the ground, literally. On the ground, the yep. Um, and so I'm Chris going to have a great guest on tomorrow. And um Make sure you uh, 
follow us, subscribe, and do all that other, you know, everything you else. That you ask for. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Subscribe. <laughs> give us 10 stars. Have a great day. Share with everyone. <laughs> exactly. Have a good one, guys. Bye, guys. Bye.